Thailand is located in Southeast Asia. If you define Thailand on a map, it's uh, located in the 1040 window. It's one of the fastest growing population areas uh, in uh, really in all of the world. And I say that to say the need here uh, is great. Bangkok, of course, is the Thai capital. Uh, interestingly, in the Thai language, the word for Bangkok is the largest word in the world. It's a, more than a paragraph long, if you were to say it in Thai. Uh, but uh, Bangkok is just a, another large, thriving Asian city. Those who come here describe it as being a, a blend of old and new, all merged together. It's certainly a bustling place. Uh, there are so many people here, they don't exactly know the population of Bangkok. Uh, some people say it's somewhere between 9 and 16 million people. It varies, there are a lot of people working here. And we found that people in Bangkok, are, whilst they're surrounded by lots of people, they, they really are looking for uh, good friends and they're much more open to talking. And that's actually been very effective for us because as I've been able to spend time in Bangkok, I've been able to meet people literally on the street, strike up friendships. Uh, we start by talking, we might sit down, eat together. And, uh, and oftentimes in the beginning, uh, they don't even know what I do. They won't ask of that, we'll just be good friends. And I found here that if you can uh, spend time with somebody and demonstrate genuine love, there's usually uh, perhaps an initial suspicion as to what does this person want. But if you can show a genuine love, uh, when you get the heart of somebody here, you also get their ears. And when you get their ears, you get that opportunity then to, to show them uh, the gospel, to, to talk to them about what Jesus did for them and they listen. You also see a great deal of patriotism. The Thai people have a great love for their country. The Thai flag uh, speaks of what they call the three pillars of this country of Thailand. Uh, the red on the Thai flag represents the blood of the Thai people. The Thai people have a saying where they say all Thais are of one blood. The white on the Thai flag uh, represents Buddhism and most Thais are Buddhism and consider that part of their identity. And then the blue purple part of the Thai flag speaks of the royal family. Uh, the royal family is very important to Thailand. They, they add a great deal of stability here and uh, Thai people uh, love the king very much and, and uh, the royal family have been instrumental in doing a lot of good things for Thailand and helping the poor. So the Thai flag represents the pillars. You might think of it as a three-legged stool and uh, they preciously guard over those three legs uh, as part of the very institution of the place. The population of Thailand is about 70 million people uh, the Thai culture goes back a very long way. If you were to come to Thailand, like a lot of people do as visitors, uh, you get to observe the culture being played out in daily life uh, all around the cities, whether you're in the country or the cities. Uh, you'll see Thais out uh, uh, worshipping at the temple. Uh, most Thais would have a spirit house in their home. Uh, to understand the Thai people, you have to understand that their uh, religion is wholly incorporated into their daily life. Whether they work in a bank or work in a hotel, they drive a taxi, they sell food on the, the street, or whether they even are in the army or a school teacher, they don't separate uh, their religion from their daily life. And so their religion here is mostly Buddhism, Buddhism in Thailand, uh, in its strictest teaching, doesn't teach that there even is heaven or hell and doesn't teach there is a God. But if you talk to Thai people out on the street, in the farms, uh, in the cities, and, and you ask them about those things, uh, almost all of them will tell you that they do believe there is a heaven and there is a hell. But if you ask them, well, what do you think you have to do to be able to, to go to heaven? Uh, mostly they would say, uh, try to be good, but they never know how much good is enough to be able to get to heaven. 
uh, that leaves them wondering with great uncertainty. It's been a real privilege to be able to be here and to be able to take the gospel and explain to uh, Thai people that God loves them, that he doesn't want them to be uncertain about where they'll spend eternity and he's made a way that they would be able to go to heaven. And God sent his only son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die for them. When Jesus was hanging on the cross, uh, it wasn't the nails keeping him there, but he was there to bear their sin. Uh, many of the Thai people, when they hear that, uh, First of all, that knowledge is quite profound to them. Uh, they, they, they can't believe that, that somebody would do that for them. We've seen here as the gospel goes out and as people listen that the Spirit of God will work powerfully on their heart. And uh, we've been able to see numbers of people come to Christ and the change in their lives has just been amazing. Uh, God has just done tremendous miracles here. People who even sometimes their own village, their own town had written them off as being beyond help, beyond redemption. We've seen God save people like that. And not only have they been saved, not only is their name in the book of life and they're on their way to heaven, those people have tremendously changed lives right here and now. They become a great testimony to those around. We've seen God do the things that men cannot do. Uh, lives change, families come back together, uh, people surrender to serving the Lord. Most Thai people who receive Christ as their saviour don't have any previous point of reference. And what I mean by that is they've, they've never been to church anywhere else. Uh, they've never heard a Christian song sang before. They, uh, they never sat under a sermon. They don't know what that's like. So they really do come in just, just wholly open and they really need to be taught right from the beginning. And so. Uh, we have to explain things. Why do we sing unto our God? What is our God like that? How do we worship God? What is an offering? What is, what is that that we're doing? Where does that go? And uh, whilst that can be challenging, it's also refreshing uh, because they're very open to just receive those things from the Lord. Uh, it's a most amazing thing to, to see the Holy Spirit working in their hearts and their mind and and many, many times the Spirit of God shows me His way ahead of me. Long before I've got to teach somebody something, He's already taught them. And they'll come and they'll say, I don't know why I'm feeling this way, uh, but uh, you know, I used to do this thing and now I don't feel good about it. Uh, it just feels like it's wrong. And of course, what they'll be talking about will be something the Bible has said very clearly, but I haven't taught that yet. And what you're seeing is the Spirit of God is working in them, the same Spirit that's in you changing them, making them like Christ, uh, teaching them the ways of God. And uh, as, they, as they transform into that Christ-likeness, uh, they become a very powerful testimony to the people who are looking on. Uh, the miracle of our faith is that God is a living God, uh, powerful and present. Uh, we're not following a religious creed or something that came of men. And the evidence of that is in the changed lives that, uh, that God brings about. Um, miraculous things that only God could do. Uh, a few years ago, it got impressed in my heart that we should move to Nakhon Sawan and Joe and his uh, new wife, Di, and Suzanne and I, we moved to Nakhon Sawan. We didn't know anyone here. We didn't even know where we were going to be able to stay. Uh, but step by step, God has provisioned us and We've begun to see amazing things happen here. Many, many people now here that we've been able to reach have come to Christ and God has formed a local church here in Nakhon Sawan where there was nothing, now there is something. Uh, there's a light here now where we have a chance to be able to tell the people of this area and beyond uh, about Christ and uh, His love for them. There's a great need for laborers here. Uh, most of the Thai people have, have never heard the gospel and. So we endeavor to get out and, and, and tell others. Part of what we're doing here is training people, training men. And we do that by spending time. I spend a lot of time with our men, our core men. Perhaps a little bit like Jesus spent time with his disciples. And our goal is here to continue to train those men to get them to a place where in a coming day, they'll be able to go out into other places in Thailand 
and tell others that good news that they themselves heard. Uh, and it's a burden of our people to do that. Now I, I marry, have two children, and then um, serve full time in ministry. Uh, uh, I preach every Sunday and I discipleship the people here every, every week. I, my burden is want to see the Thai people come to know Christ. I try to look every opportunity to talk, to tell them, and that I want more Thai people can get saved through Jesus Christ. Uh, we were recently able to get a, uh, a block of land here where we've just been able to complete a, a church auditorium. Uh, we're beginning now to construct, Lord willing, the facilities that we need, really the tools we need, just to be able to train people here uh, with the goal to get them out into other places in Thailand. Uh, our next project here is we're going to need to get some accommodation here. There are people who want to come here, they want to train, they want to learn, and uh, we need to be able to accommodate them here, and so we're praying that we will soon be able to uh, begin construction on a place for them to be able to stay here as they learn the Word of God, as they're trained in serving the Lord with the view that we can get them out back to uh, their, own, their own villages, their own cities that they came to. As we move forward now into the future, uh, we're mindful that time is running out. Most uh, Bible-believing Christians understand that the coming of the Lord is, is not far away. So we need to use our time. We need to be busy. We need to be getting people out with the gospel. And that's what we're trying to do here, is to train these people, not only to be effective witnesses here in Nakhon Sawan, but to take the gospel out into other places. God is not willing that any should perish. And so we want to get the gospel out. Thank you to those who have uh, prayed for us and uh, called out our name to heaven. We believe that when you pray like that and you pray about our needs and you mention us, that, that results in practical, tangible outcomes for us here on the field. Our Heavenly Father hears your prayers and blesses and helps us. And that's been a vital part of what we've been able to do here. Thank you also to those who've given. We appreciate that God uses you to resource us on the field. And we know that what you're doing will abound unto lasting fruit here. The real reward will not be my thank you, but the real reward is the one that comes and that lasts eternally, that heavenly reward that Jesus spoke of. God bless you for giving, for praying, for caring about people here in Thailand. We're thankful for you.